Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. We're gonna try and start incorporating stock analysis videos where we take a deeper dive into individual stocks or multiple stocks and kind of pair them up against one another to determine if they are a buy, sell, or hold. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at Starbucks, which just reported their Q4 earnings and shares popped more than 10%. Are they still a buy at today's level? We're gonna break down all the different valuation metrics. We're gonna look at those recent quarterly results and look at where analysts are looking at where the stock could potentially go in the next 12 months. So if you're excited for today's video, do me a huge favor, smash that like button down below as I truly appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here back for another video. As always, I'm a CPA and not a financial advisor, so please do not take this as financial advice. And always on this channel, I'm trying to break down the complex world of investing and put it into an easy to understand format. So today, we're gonna break down Starbucks. But before we do, let me mention today's video sponsor, which is The Motley Fool. The Motley Fool has a ton of great resources and products available for investors of all different levels. And right now, if you go to fool.com forward slash mark, you could sign up to receive their 10 best stocks to buy right now. All right, now back to the video where today we're gonna to break down Starbucks, look at their most recent quarterly results, look at their valuation after a 10% move in the market just in the past week or so, is the stock still a buy? Is it a sell or is it a hold if you're a current shareholders? We're also gonna look at what analysts think are gonna happen over the next 12 months and beyond for Starbucks. So to begin, Starbucks currently trades with a market cap of $119 billion. And in 2023, shares of SBUX are up just 2% and just recently turning positive with that 10% move higher after those Q4 earnings. All right, so let's begin by looking at those Q4 earnings. Starbucks reported Q4 revenues of $9.37 billion, Q4 adjusted EPS of $1.06 per share. Starbucks beat on both the top and bottom line compared to analyst expectations. At analysts, we're looking for revenues of $9.28 billion and adjusted EPS of $0.97 per share. So a solid beat on the bottom line especially. Starbucks has surpassed 38,000 stores globally in Q4, and the international store count has surpassed 20,000. One of the key metrics that you want to look at when it comes to Starbucks or other retailers, even think of things like Home Depot, Walmart, Target, or even Lowe's, same store sales tries to put things in apples to apples comparison. It looks at stores that have been around for at least 12 months or more in both periods. In terms of same store sales for Starbucks, they saw global and North America same store sales increase 8% which were driven by a higher average ticket of 4% and 3% higher in number of transactions. China, which is the company's second largest market, saw their same store sales increase 5%, which was driven largely by an 8% increase in the number of transactions, offset by a 3% decline in the average ticket sales. Another bright spot for the company was operating margin, which was up to 18.2% compared to 14.2% in the same period just a year ago. So those are the high level quarterly results. Now let's take a closer look at the full year results for Starbucks. On the year, Starbucks generated revenues of $35.96 billion, an 11.6% increase year over year. Global comp sales increased 8%, which was driven by 5% increase in average ticket and a 3% increase in comp sales. Operating margin for the year was 16.3%, again, a nice increase from prior year when the company generated an operating margin of 14.3%, so a 200 basis point increase year over year. Sales leverage and store operating efficiencies are what is driving this increase. On the year, EBITDA grew 16% to $6.95 billion. If you frequent a Starbucks on a regular basis, like I do from time to time, then chances are you're probably a rewards member. Starbucks has one of the most loyal customer bases on the planet today. And at the end of their fiscal year, they closed out with 32.6 million active members within their rewards program, which was an increase of 14% year over year. So that was a quick overview of the company's quarterly results as well as their full year fiscal 2023 results. Now let's take a closer look at valuation to determine whether Starbucks is a buy, sell, or hold. Let's begin with the price to earnings ratio or the PE ratio. And based on a trailing 12 months, shares of Starbucks currently trade with a PE of 28.9 times which is below their historical five-year average of 31 times. Looking ahead, analysts are looking for Starbucks to generate EPS of $4.14 per share, which means shares trade at a forward earnings multiple of 25 times. 
With EPS projected to grow 17% in FY 2024, this gives Starbucks a peg ratio of 1.7 times. Not terrible, but certainly not suggesting shares are undervalued based on this metric alone. Now let's turn our attention to free cash flow, where the company generated $3.68 billion in free cash flow in 2023, a 43.8% increase year over year. This equates to a free cash flow per share of $3.22. As such, Starbucks shares currently trade with a price to free cash flow of 32.1 times, which is above the company's 10-year medium of 31.3 times. On a margin basis, Starbucks operated with a free cash flow margin of 10.8%. This is a metric that I like to look at pretty much for every company that's out there, regardless of whether they're a dividend paying stock or not. I want to know that for every dollar of revenue that that company is able to generate, what percentage of that dollar is being turned into free cash flow? Because again, with free cash flow, you can pay dividends if you're a dividend paying company, you can buy back stock, you can make strategic acquisitions, and you can pay down more debt. It gives you a lot more flexibility as a company. The 10.8% free cash flow margin was a sizable jump year over year from 7.9% in 2022. Another area I like to look at when analyzing business is return on invested capital, or ROIC. This measures how much cash flow a company is able to generate based on the money they reinvest back into the business. During the company's most recent quarter, they generated ROIC of 18.1% and generated 15.9% through the entire fiscal year. Here's a look at ROIC percentage over the past three years. FY 2023, 15.9%, as I just mentioned. FY 2022, 13.3%. FY 2021, 14.1%. So we're starting to see some sizable increase just from a few years ago. So when it comes to returning money to shareholders, there's two primary ways to do this. You can pay dividends or you can buy back stock, or some companies like to do both. Let's begin by taking a look at share buybacks for Starbucks, which is something they've really started to slow over the past year and a half. Looking back at FY 2021, Starbucks had no share buybacks. In FY 2022, Starbucks bought back $4 billion worth of stock, but that fell to just $984 million in FY 2023. Although the company is not buying back as much stock right now, they do continue to pay a safe, reliable, and growing dividend. Starbucks currently yields a dividend of 2.2%, and they have a five-year dividend growth rate of 10%, making them a dividend growth stock. The company has also increased their dividend for 13 consecutive years and growing. Now let's turn our attention to see what analysts believe Starbucks will be able to do over the next three years, beginning with earnings per share. Here's a look at earnings per share estimates for those three years. In FY 2024, analysts are looking for $4.14, 2025, $4.82, and 2026, $5.69. So analysts believe that the growth story will remain for this company, with growth hovering right around 17% each of the next three years. Now, in terms of price target, analysts rate the stock a moderate buy with an average 12-month price target of $112.50, implying less than 10% upside from current levels. So this was the first annual report for the new CEO of Starbucks, which I'm probably going to butcher his name, but it was Laxman Narashiman. And really, it was a good one. They've been putting in a plan to become a more efficient company, especially as they add more stores. They need to become more efficient, which will grow free cash flow and allow them a lot more flexibility. That flexibility showed as operating margin increased, free cash flow margin increased. So a lot of good things to like in this Starbucks report. So the results are good. You're still getting a solid dividend of 2%, mid 2%, a dividend that is safe, reliable, and continues to grow. However, when it comes to valuation, the shares, although I own them, just don't look that intriguing at current levels, especially after the big jump of 10% plus that we've seen just in the past week alone. We have EPS that's hovering right below their five and 10 year averages. However, on a free cash flow basis, and when we look at price to EBITDA and stuff like that, it's just not that big of a discount. The peg ratio isn't there. So the growth that you're getting with the multiple that you're paying for is just not all that intriguing right here. So if we got Starbucks closer to $90 or below somewhere where it was hovering at uh, a couple months ago, then that would make things a lot more intriguing. Again, I already own Starbucks. So again, I'm not looking to add at this current level. Down in the comments section below, let me know, do you believe Starbucks is a buy, sell, or hold? And let me know what you think of these videos, these types of videos that I'm gonna try and add 
midweek for us in between our regularly scheduled videos that we do on a weekly basis. So again, thanks for joining. And if this is your first time joining, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so, hit that like button as I truly appreciate it. It really helps with the algorithm and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.